Hey everybody, it's Record Time with Chris, episode 53, and got some Record Store Day stuff to show you, including this tote bag some stores will have to give away. I want to give a quick hello to Griffin from Facebook. Now, if you buy a lot of uh, like 60s psych compilations, you find you kind of have a lot of the same tracks over and over. So um, you're going to want to keep an eye out for this record. It's called Poppies, uh, Sorted Finery from the First Psychedelic Age. And uh, the reason you're going to want to look out for this is because, well, there's one completely unreleased track never heard before. And um, everything else on here has not been compiled a gazillion times, um, probably some of them not at all. Uh, it's all stuff from Vanguard and Stax and um, original sound and maybe some other labels whose catalogs kind of got rolled into those at some point. This is, uh, this is gonna be fun. It also has like a really cool booklet, four pages with, as you can see, tons of liner notes. And probably the best known person right here on the record is uh, Buffy St. Marie. Really neat, you know, liner notes. Check out that uh, 45 label there. Good notes. The record itself is on nice transparent red vinyl. Excited to check that one out. Hollowed Ground is the second album by uh, Violent Femmes, and this is an all analog cut. Don't know how many people know that, but it is green vinyl, green transparent, uh, lucent vinyl. You're definitely going to want to um, keep an eye out for, for that. People, I don't know if it's, people know that it's all analog, but they did put it on the sticker. Haven't heard people talking about that. Another record that's going to be sounding really good because it was cut by Kevin Gray at 45 RPM is uh, the Tedeschi Trucks Band record. And this has three outtakes from their most recent album and a live version, 11 minute live version of one of the songs on there. Nice, heavy, very cleanly pressed black vinyl. Here we are, Santana 7 inch. These are, these two songs will both be on a uh, small hole there. The, uh, his next album, which was produced by Rick Rubin. Let's, all right, I'll show you the label first. This is the record by Bingo hand job, and it was from like a secret live show um, in 1991. And if you, it doesn't say who the actual artists on here are, but it does uh, the songs on here like World Leader Pretend, Radio Song, Pop Song, Losing My Religion. So you think about who the one I love. So you think of what band was playing songs by those titles, you'll have an idea who this is. It's called Sanitized for Your Protection. Oh, and just like Traveling Wilburys, they all have um, fake names on the back. So if you remove this band, just like it was, you know, a toilet seat in a hotel or something, you can pull the records out. Black vinyl, and the sleeves, as you can see, both just <clears throat> both had that, and the track listings are scribbled on the back in what looks like Sharpie, and the uh, if you haven't figured out who it is, the songs well um, are all written by well whatever there are you know it's REM it's REM but you probably knew that the Game Face seven inch on yellow vinyl has a nice two sided black and white insert those are both two newly recorded songs for this record store day and the B sides of Tom Petty cover. Here is a Youth of Today 7-inch with a Partridge Family cover and Sex Pistols cover. Again, colored vinyl. And there's a black and white insert here as well. Neither of those have been on a uh, album before. This album, Steve Gadd Band, just won a jazz Grammy. It's a gatefold cover. We also have the, this here, Green Jelly, the Serial Killer album and uh, soundtrack. Uh, Gatefold, 
It's also first time on vinyl, 1,500 copies, and it's clear with glow-in-the-dark splatter vinyl. And um, we know one track has two guys from Tool and Les Claypool on it. That was the one with the video, if you remember that. Griot Galaxy was a jazz group in, from Detroit. This was recorded in 1982, never been out since then. And the, the label was Black and White Records, so the record is Black and White. Well, I thought I was done, but I don't know if you heard a little bit of uh, noise there when I was talking about the um, RSD3, but uh, that was FedEx outside. And there's another record in here. So let me show this to you. And this is one of the ones that, like, I'm psyched about just being able to show it to you. It's because it's, uh, unless you see it, you might not quite understand what it is. Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. It looks better than I thought. Okay. Oh, Jesus Christ. Okay, this is the, um, the Modest Mouse Triangular Record. Now, let me show you what what this is. As you can see, it's like the sleeve. Is, they're, they're calling it a 7-inch because there's just one sawn on it. Looks like it's actually a 10-inch that was cut down. Oh, this is cool. So it's open only on one side, like a snow cone or something. Let me show you that really cool cover. There we go. And the record itself is green. And this is a little mangled, but it does. There we go. It does fit in there. Cool looking green color. And, oh, look at this. Black Sabbath and Gentle Giant fans will recognize the Vertigo logo. That's cool. Um, this probably looks pretty great when it's on, on the turntable. So that looks pretty cool, huh? That's neat. Nice little uh, triangular record and, you know, two Modest Mouse songs on it. Zarface, which is the rapper's 7L and Esoteric, and um, Inspect the Deck, have another comic book and record set for us. This one's 20 pages and has two stories in it. And the record goes along with the, uh, with the comics. Uh, the, and they're, uh, there's a, they're pretty funny. And you can see that they're sort of, they're all done in that like kind uh, of uh, Gene Cole and Steve Ditko kind of style, Silver Age, Marvel Comics, Black Final, and the record has similar art on it. And you see the elephant there, the first, there's even like, uh, you know, it, the, the, the Zarface character kind of struggles um, with, um, like Batman, like how, how violent should you be to, uh, you know, particularly nasty criminals, right? Like uh, um, elephant tusk poachers in the first one. Dillinger, the reggae album, reggae guy, CB200, had a sort of hit, it was called uh, Cocaine on the Brain, and this is a nice reissue of it. I'm gonna put my, uh, I gotta put gloves on for this one because there's a the uh, the booklet is like nice glossy black and I don't want to get fingerprints on it. So the Grow Deck Whipper Jetty is the name of the band. This was produced by James Brown and it is the was the first album on uh, Brown's People Records imprint. The uh, leader of the band was is a guy named David Matthews who um, had uh, ended up being like a, uh, really, like a jazz producer. It comes with this really nice booklet. It's a book with um, a very long essay and it's the kind of stuff you'd expect, like uh, pictures of tape boxes and 45s. Now, the, there's a companion release that I don't have just yet. Uh, James Brown show is funky down here that uh, is a, uh, similarly, it's it's funky, it's funk, but uh, that's it, like a, the James Brown was like an instrumental funk, and this has more like jazz and psych and stuff mixed into it. Um, it'd be a good, um, good pair of releases to get if you like, are, if you're into like um, the early days of, the early side of Funkadelic, I wanna check it out if you like 
especially if you like to be challenged a little bit. Rudy Ray Moore is another Record Store Day alum, and uh, there's a movie about him coming out that uh, Eddie Murphy plays him. So he's like a you know one of those like like a filthy comedian from the 70s, a lot of real dirty jokes, as you could probably guess from the uh, from the cover. Here's a seven inch by Chuck Mosley, who was the uh, original front man of Faith No More. And this is cool because it's a, uh, this is a um, main based label. This is from his very last recording session before he died. It's a cover of Nothing Compares to You and um, also an old Faith No More song. They're uh, like acoustic covers. Now, Pete Rock. This is cool. He's starting his own label and he's using Record Store Dave to release the first one, which is cool. You know, there's a lot of people who will uh, like use a Record Store Day release to kind of um, seed, you know, uh, like like get more awareness for, for something that they're going to be planning that's larger. So here he is. He's announcing he's got his own label. And to, um, so he's got to start with a pretty exciting release, which is what this is. Return of the SP-1200. Well, the SP-1200 was the sampler drum machine that he used to use and uh, the this is an entire record of unreleased beats from the 1990s. I'll be back Monday or Tuesday of next week the 8th or the 9th with you know the big video but uh, if you can't wait for that you could always go backwards because I've probably covered a few dozen of this year's records already. But hey, I'll see you in a week, and I, until then I hope you're listening to something awesome.